On this episode of Southlaw Computing, we're going to show you how to swap out an instrument cluster on the newer body style 2017 and a half and greater Jeep compasses. And that's coming up next. <laughs> Warning, the following video is performed by a trained professional. It is meant for educational purposes only. Please do not attempt to try anything you see here. Enjoy. What's going on YouTube? Dan from South Hall Computing, and today we're gonna to show you how to replace a instrument cluster on a 2018, or I should say starting 17 and a half and greater Jeep Compass. You may be asking Dan, why are you replacing an instrument cluster on such a new vehicle? Well, my 2018 does not have what they call the technology package. And that means the current instrument cluster that's in my car is only a dinky, I think it's a 3.7 monochrome inch display and I actually was able to grab this one off of eBay for just a little bit over a hundred bucks. This one here is included on the technology package and it's a seven inch full color LCD panel. If you were to buy this piece uh, brand new from say your dealership, it'll cost anywhere from 700 to a thousand dollars. Not gonna happen. So I was lucky enough to find this one on eBay from a wrecked Jeep Compass and I snatched it up. So there's gonna be a couple of things that we may run into here. Number one, we have to figure out how the heck to take apart this uh, dash in the car because uh, some of these are a real pain in the you know what. This one may or may not be that difficult. As you also see the four corners, this thing is mounted with four screws somehow. So that's good. We wanna hope that the connector is the same for both the smaller and larger screen displays. Another issue we might run into is the mileage that gets reported by these clusters. The one in my car is just under 2,000 miles. This one here, I believe is slightly over 2,000. So we need to see if the car reports that to this display or the display just holds this information itself. And lastly, another potential problem we might run into is the car's computer might need to be reflashed to take advantage of this. So I have no idea if this is gonna be the case. And there's only one way to find out. So let's get to the car. Let's try to swap this out and see what we get. Let's begin. So while we let this car warm up, we're going to take a final look at the stock instrument cluster for this vehicle and the mileage, which is reporting 1659. Okay, let's get this disassembly going. As always, when you're working on a vehicle, the first thing you should do, especially when working on electronics, is disconnect the negative from the battery. Now this newer model here is slightly different, but it's still relatively on the same side with the battery. Looks like there's two clips here that we're gonna remove if it wants to come out. And, uh, oh, okay, well, there's the negative right there. So what we're gonna do is unbolt this guy here and make sure it doesn't make contact and then begin disassembling the dashboard and see where that takes us. Let's do this. I did forget to mention, however, because this has the auto stop start technology here on this vehicle, there's two batteries. Now the million dollar question is, when I disconnect the primary battery, am I still gonna get power in the car in itself? If that's the case, then I'm probably gonna have to unbolt this here and disconnect that secondary backup battery just in case. But we'll do this one first, see if we get any lights in the car. And if we don't, we're good to go. If not, then we gotta figure out how to disconnect this secondary or backup battery, whatever uh, the proper terminology for this guy is. Okay, and the magic size is a 10 millimeter. Let's get this guy removed. Okay, so we found out the secondary battery um, I have gloves, rubber gloves, preventing them from making contact, but we'll get a better shot of it when we're assembling the car. But basically, it's that little guy right down there. I removed this nut, and there we go. Now we got no power to the vehicle. Yay, now we could finally start uh, taking the dash apart. Let's go. Okay, so here's our replacement cluster. 
Let's compare that to what we got here. Don't mind that microphone from the Eonon head unit here. So it looks like this is just an outer bezel that just slaps on top of the cluster. And if I had to guess, I bet you I pop this off and it's gonna reveal uh, some screws behind there. Now my big hope is pop this off, hit the screws, I mean, or take them out, and this should come right out. It is attached by this material down here. Hopefully I could just keep it on there and just fold it out, take the cluster out, and then put the new one in. So let's see what happens. A little tab in there to remove that uh, plastic piece. And hidden underneath there are these two hex screws. And let me find out what size they are. And the magic number for this one is a T25, this guy right here. So let's remove those out and see what next challenge we have. So that was uh, slightly terrifying, but yeah, it appears with a couple of good pulls, this uh, outer bezel just comes right out. I was worried that I'd have to take apart the lower part, especially seeing the word airbag down there. That's the last thing I want to trigger and try to replace, but it looks like it's, uh, try to get a better shot here, a pretty clean takeout. So now the question is, can I just get to the screws and remove everything with this guy in the way? Oh boy, well, another challenge. Let's see what happens. Success. We got the other instrument cluster removed and it looks like a very similar connector I'm excited. Let's see. <clears throat> I mean, looking at these two, it looks very similar to me. So let's uh, just plug it in, connect the battery, and see if it works. So, immediately promising, we got an icon, and what I expected, the mileage prior to this vehicle is showing up so again i had under 2,000 miles this one's reporting now 2500 not a big deal i'll just go to the dealership and have them reset it uh it's all hooked up let's start it up and see what we get and oh yeah it is definitely working all right now that the <laughs> It's reporting the hood is open. That's pretty cool. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and hook this guy up and um, I'll close it all up now. That other connector for the secondary battery that I disconnected was this guy over here to completely cut the power to the vehicle. So again, it was this nut, removed him, and obviously the primary battery right over there. And there you have it. You can successfully swap out the 3.7 inch for the 7 inch LCD screen. Uh, again, I will have to go to my local Jeep dealership and get the cluster's mileage uh, fixed. That was to be kind of expected. I also need to uh, get that date fixed on the top there. As always, if you like what you see here, obviously like the video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, join our forum, all that great stuff. It would be greatly appreciated. As always, this is Dan from Southhawk Computing. Until the next time.